welcome to today's PPMA Lunch and Learn. Uh, I'm Julie Biggs, I'm the Regional Chair for the South West with PPMA. Uh, and today we're joined by our friends and uh, sponsors and colleagues, uh, Penna. So I'm not going to do too much introduction, they're going to introduce themselves. But just could I ask you to make sure that your, um, your microphones are on mute, you can have your camera on and off, whichever you prefer. Uh, and just to say that this session will be recorded. Okay, really looking forward to today's session. So I'm going to swiftly hand over to you, Julie. Thanks, Julie. That's really kind of you. And hello, everybody, and happy Friday. Uh, the sun is actually shining. And I was just telling the team, it's my birthday today. So you don't need to sing happy birthday. This is the best present I could wish for, a sourcing webinar. Um, so no, lovely to see you all. And thank you to all of you that's been joining in the Lunch and Learn PPMA webinars. Um, Penna, I've really enjoyed joining the PPMA as we try and come together as a, a, an invaluable network of professionals to share our experience and learn from each other, be it COVID related or be it just general uh, learning for the HR and OD profession so it's been a, a real privilege to do them and um, it's become a bit of a Friday regular now so it always it lets me know it's Friday when we do a PPMA webinar so that's good hope you all have a great weekend um, we're taking a, a slightly different topic uh, this week last week we did assessment which I know a lot of you gave us great feedback about that um, you know we're transferring assessment online so uh, very good to get your feedback and your ideas and thoughts on that so keep them coming today we want to look at um, um, I suppose the impact we've seen um, over the last few years actually not just COVID related but of high demand from hiring managers for a cost-effective targeted quality way of recruiting and we all know that over the last few years traditional advertising as we all knew it um, whilst effective in certain areas has not always been uh, as cost-effective as returning the results we've wanted from our advertising campaigns particularly in hard to fill roles and particularly volume campaigns um, so we've had our sourcing offer for about the last three years now and we've seen constant growth and demand for a niche way of recruiting so it's a pleasure to introduce John Dilling, Sonia Tanda uh, from Penna who are our experts in this area and can share some of their experiences with you uh, but also so our client Lauren Benson from Basildon Council. It's great to have a, a client case study, um, you know, strengths and weaknesses to hear how it works for uh, Basildon in their particular area. So uh, what we want to talk to you about is just give you some insights into how our sourcing offer works, but generally um, how this approach might work for you and your hiring managers. So I'll hand over to John Dilling to start that conversation. Thanks, Julie. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you all. Hope you're all keeping well. Uh, yeah, my first PPMA Friday Lunch and Learn webinar, so it's going to be a good experience doing this for you this afternoon. But um, good to see you all. Thanks for joining. Um, if, for those that don't know me, my name is John Dilling. Uh, I'm sourcing lead in our sourcing business. And as Julie has said, we wanted to offer you some insight into essentially what candidate sourcing is. Um, not everyone knows, they think they know what it is, but don't always know exactly what it is. And, and really how it can work and how it can help you fill your hard to fill vacancies and middle management vacancies across the organization. So first of all, you know, what is sourcing? Well, it, it does kind of say what it is, but, but in short, it's a way to proactively target and engage with candidates that you wouldn't otherwise reach through normal advertising channels, really, and the more recruitment, uh, traditional recruitment channels that you've been using to, uh, for, for many years. So it's all about finding candidates that are exactly right for your vacancy, contacting them, engaging with them to discuss your vacancy. Um, it involves a process of market mapping, um, a market mapping techniques to really drill down uh, so it's about sourcing candidates based on qualifications, their experience, sourcing geographically, and where you can target candidates regionally far more effectively than advertising might, as well as widen the net further, of course, um, looking you know, more national if necessary. Um, and even targeting candidates via organisation and things like that. Um, more importantly, it's about reaching the passive market. Um, you know, so much of the people that you need to reach the passive audience, the active audience just isn't enough. It's those that don't even know they want to make a move yet um, and maybe aren't looking where you're advertising. So in terms of how we use candidate sourcing at Penna, um, we primarily use it within our sourcing business, which is uh, predominantly for non-executive recruitment in the kind of circa 30 to 75k salary bracket. So essentially we're using it to help you guys feel critical 
middle management and, and, and lots of different hard to fill roles across the organization. Um, in terms of what we actually do, well, it's really about working with you in partnership. Um, we really want to sort of find and excite and secure the talent you really need and are struggling to find. So after taking a brief and doing all of our candidate sourcing, in addition to this, we actually manage the process for you as well in the candidate journey. So it's taking everything off the hiring manager's hands. Um, this is providing you guys and hiring managers with capacity, um, especially important when there might be multiple roles after restructuring and volume in terms of recruitment. Um, everyone's really busy doing other things at the moment, of course, um, and, and just letting hiring managers get on with their day job, really. Um, as important as that, for this, for us, sorry, the opportunity is to really engage with candidates. It's all very well finding, but the key is also about engaging with candidates, um, giving us and you the opportunity to sell the opportunity, talk about it to them, put the right candidates in, talk about your employment proposition and why this, this role is right for them, um, and, and really get candidates through the door that you might otherwise wouldn't, and over the line, and get them to actually apply. So after the closing day, we do some initial, initial sifting, um, we conduct rigorous telephone interviews, um, and essentially what we're doing is giving you a high caliber long list, a graded long list, for you to simply just get on and shortlist an interview from. So reducing time to hire and reducing the process for you. Um, contrary to belief, this kind of process doesn't really take any longer than advertising. Um, in fact, when you see the way that we manage things for you and the way the process can work, it, it can often be quicker. And all of this is obviously done in the usual penal way, um, real emphasis on client and, and, and candidate care. So I suppose in summary, what candidate sourcing and our approach is doing is giving you guys a, a different approach to middle management recruitment and harder to fill recruitment when you're struggling. It's offering a more guaranteed, uh, proactive, engaging, strategic approach to the market um, and, and providing you with efficiency. I suppose the final piece of the jigsaw is, you know, sometimes even sourcing isn't enough. Um, so what we're able to do here at Penna is therefore pro provide a, a bit more of a blended approach. Um, we go to our attraction team and start looking at how advertising and a more innovative attraction and performance media channel approach can also work. Um, so that's where I'm going to hand over to my colleague Sonia, who's, you've said, is one of our attraction strategy specialists. Um, this is her world and, and she'll tell you a little bit about how some of the work she's doing is complementing and working with what we're doing with candidate sourcing. So, Sonia, over to you. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, thanks, John. Um, as John said, I'm Sonia Tandem. Um, I'm a traction strategy specialist and I work within our performance media team um, and I'll cover off in detail what that really looks like. Um, just going back to advertising and how we supplement our sourcing offer. Um, essentially, historically, Many of the job adverts that go out live have gone on job boards, which, as John said, is great to target the active users, but it, it, it usually isn't enough to um, cast the net wider and target those passive candidates. Um, a recent re LinkedIn research suggested that only 15% of candidates are actively looking, um, and if they're looking, they'll be looking um, on job boards or a kind of prospective career, um, sorry, prospective um, career sites that they want to work for. Um, the remaining 85% um, of candidates are, are essentially your passive, um, but they are open to new opportunities should the right one come their way. So at Penna, in our kind of performance media team, essentially the platforms we work with are the ones that allows you to buy space much more specifically and targeted to the users that you're trying to reach, but in a much more passive way. So one of the examples of that is, for example, Google. Um, 79% of job searches start here even before anyone goes onto a job board um, and essentially through kind of clever paid search engine marketing keyword um, advertising, we can get your jobs appearing right at the top um, before any job board and candidates can click and go straight through to, to career site or to the Penna, um, Penna kind of microsite or WCM um, and essentially capturing that, that passive audience. Um, 
in addition to that, you've got your, your social media channels. Um, so channels such as LinkedIn and Facebook allows you to target uh, users based on job title, um, skills and experience. Um, and essentially you can plant your, your messages and your job vacancies into candidate news feeds. So once again, highly effective and, and being in the line of sight of these passive candidates. And then moving on to kind of programmatic, um, this is buying ad space much more based on algorithms and data. Um, and again, we can target by job title and qualification and, and location as well. And essentially what we're doing here is we're finding the right candidate um, real time based on kind of data. And as they search and consume their daily content, um, I'm sorry, daily digital content. So for example, whilst they're browsing their social media apps, any of the news sites such as The Times, The Guardian, um, or they uh, might be on some blogs and forums so we can find where they are online cast that net and target them and, and put your kind of opportunities in front of them and um, so this is very much an approach that we're moving where we're moving away from those traditional routes to market um, and being much more clever and tactical in our approach to to try and capture those good quality um, candidates in a, in a much more passive way um, because the research kind of suggests that actually it's those candidates we need to be targeting as well as the 15% that are looking. So these kind of tactical moves really helps us to, to kind of reach out to that market. And blending that in with sourcing essentially means that where we are capturing those candidates, attracting them in and keeping, uh, attracting them in, the sourcing teams can keep them warm and um, essentially interact with them, engage with them and really bring your opportunities and EVP to life um, and kickstart that kind of, um, you know application and and kind of shortlisting kind of situation there um, and that's where the two kind of sourcing and, and and the performance media channels are working really really well um in terms of engaging with that top talent i'm going to pass back to john who's going to kind of give you a bit more insight into sourcing and the market map great thanks sonia brilliant so hopefully that gives you an idea about what candidate sourcing is how a blended approach can work with the different ways that advertising performance media the digital age is upon us advertising looks very very different and, and sourcing complements beautifully with that when when you really need something for the hard to fill uh, roles that, that clearly you've got um, that kind of gives you an outline of, of some of the approaches that you can start to think about but we thought it would be also helpful to share with you as Julie mentioned earlier some of the market insight some of the conversations I'm having when you're thinking about the recruitment that we're working on between the 30 and 70k market gives us a lot of conversation a lot of insight um, and, and it'd be quite nice to share some of those challenges with you really some of the problems and obviously the impacts that you guys have been having and I suppose where a candidate approach could be an option so I think one of the main things to really think about is how the sector has evolved considerably over recent years. Um, huge financial constraints during austerity, um, which I think you're all still feeling the effects of, and, and clearly that's not gonna change anytime soon. Um, the number of staff employed within the sector has de declined considerably. So what we've been hearing naturally, and, and this might be news to you, is that you've been having to think about delivering services really differently and with less people. So this has seen a huge uh, levels of transformation, um, internal restructuring upon restructuring in some cases, um, councils merging, working together differently, you know, even launch of new councils, of course. So as I, as I said, this is kind of leading to what we'll be seeing is that a real changing workforce and navigating recruitment through that has, has been quite difficult in some, in some instances. So we're hearing how you're needing new skill sets. Um, and, and more importantly, not being able to recruit these from, from ways that have worked traditionally and always once worked. Um, so we've really seen the, the, the increase for need for things like transformation and change managers, project managers and program managers. These are roles that I, you, know, you weren't recruiting a few years ago. Um, the need for innovation has, has seen the need for people with new ideas. We're constantly having briefings with people saying we want someone to bring us you know, new ideas and innovation and something different to our, to our organisation. Um, so while a lot of that will obviously hopefully come from the, the sector itself, an awful lot of that's coming from the private sector as well, which is a really challenging recruitment uh, piece to navigate. Um, with less money and less money coming in, um, lots of councils are trading. Um, so we've seen a huge increase in, in trading and trading companies, um, independent companies being set up to run social care. So again, we've seen the need for candidates with sort of core business skills 
very different to what local government has recruited to in the past, or very difficult, difficult challenges to, to, to navigate. Um, a lot of our recruitment and, and some of our sweet spots really are at middle management. Um, and, and, and certainly what I'm seeing and we're seeing is the role of middle manager actually changing and evolving as well. So I think with that, the days of just promoting internally to someone who's been doing the job for a long time, which is sort of the natural progression, kind of seems to be over in the main and, and, and might not sort of cut it anymore. Um, I suppose it's that sort of thing of operational capability doesn't necessarily lead to management capability. Um, you're needing managers with different skills, ones that can bring different skills to the organisation. So as I say, there's sort of a, a more of a trend for general management, ones that can mould and define teams and the organisations and again, essentially do things differently. Um, I think our executive team recruiting at senior levels have, have seen this for a while. You know, we've seen things like chief executives becoming managing directors in some councils, for example. So that's a changing role, but there's no doubt that we're now seeing an increase in this at service manager level, even at, at team leader level. Um, and I think that's a really important thing to reflect on. Um, the importance of middle manager has therefore increased significantly as well. One thing I always sort of talk about middle managers being is the glue of an organisation. Um, you know, senior directors and, and chief executives can set the vision, set the strategy, but that only becomes a reality if you have good middle managers in place that can deliver it. Um, you know, one chief executive summed it up really well when I was talking to them recently, who said when they're recruiting at this level, they need to think about how middle managers contribute to the management of the organisation as a whole, rather than just running their own function. So I think that's really interesting and a, and, a, and a challenge for you all. Through all of that, let's not forget that the same challenges are, are there. You know, a lot of the roles that are hard to fill are becoming even harder to fill. Um, so we're thinking around technical areas like building control, housing, planning, but also on down the corporate side as well around finance and legal services and IT and procurement and, and even in HR as well. Um, and a lot of this problem tends to stem from future talent pools just drying up, um, lack of candidates with the right qualifications coming through. Um, so, you know, what we've been hearing is some universities and, and trade associations aren't necessarily doing the graduate schemes or the training schemes they once did. Um, and this was, of course, brought qualified people into the market and organisations. So these are leading to skill shortages and a lack of talent coming through. Um, a lot of you, rightly so, are now putting in initiatives such as Grow Your Own Schemes, which is great, but it's still leaving immediate needs at senior management where those people aren't quite ready to fill those middle management roles. Other challenges clearly are salaries, um, probably one that we'll never get away from, but nevertheless it's there, but it's about overcoming that. Private sector competition in relation to salaries as well is an obvious problem. You know, we're certainly seeing this in areas such as planning, um, legal services is becoming an, an increasing area where private practice clearly plays more. But in, in many other areas, finance, IT and procurement, so there's some real challenges there. So, you know, a lot of what we're doing is advising you on how you can overcome that, reach people um, in, 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 in the private sector, but reaching people that actually do want to make a difference and, and, and also promoting what you guys do. Not everyone's always just after the money. Um, another increasing challenge I've also seen um, is around the use of agency staff and, and temps. And some of this is just because you're not recruiting. Um, you know, we know social care obviously plays a, a part here, a large part to, to agency staffing problem. But what we're also seeing maybe worryingly is, is some increasing use of temps and agency staff in, in, in other areas as well. So, it, you know, it's about recruiting differently and, and overcoming that. Um, moving forward, I think middle managers will become even, even more important. We're seeing that during the emergency. They've really stepped up. Um, they're delivering services, new services almost overnight. Um, so we are still seeing some gaps um, and some things that need to be addressed there as well. Moving forward, I think it's around digitalisation. Um, that's something I'm really hearing, people to embrace digital skills. They're in place, but managers that can do that and bring real innovation. And obviously managing teams remotely is, is going to be a, a, a real thing that we're going to see moving forward. So 
some of the core challenges are clear. Um, lots of roles that we're recruiting to are specialist and niche and requiring a more proactive approach. Um, some roles are really unique to councils and organisations um, and in some of those problem areas that I've talked about. Um, certainly technical, corporate and, and also in HR, as I've mentioned. I'm not going to hand over to Lauren, um, who kindly agreed to join us. It's all very well us kind of give you an idea of what, what we can do and the challenges in place. But we've been working with Basildon Council recently with a number of roles, um, using a bit more of a blended approach. And, and so she's kindly going to give us a bit of an insight into her experience and, and what we've been doing. So, Lauren, thank you. Um, over to you. Hi everyone, so my name is Lauren, I'm currently a HR officer at Basel Council and we've recently, I think we went out for around 20 roles with Penna um, from across the broad, so some were trainee roles and some were heads of service, so a right mix of different um, roles and a new, numerous ones which were hard to fill and that we'd been out for before in-house and had no success and couldn't get the right candidate in. So. Um, from the get-go kind of with Penna, the communication was really high. Not only did they build a reputation with us in HR, but with the recruiting managers themselves and kind of had it, got a sense of what we wanted from them and what they could offer us that we couldn't do in-house. Um, we started with a microsite, which um, Penna helped build, etc. cetera. Um, and they offered kind of initial um, innovative ways that we weren't offering in-house to kind of really sell these vacancies that we were um, that kind of weren't picking up the um, kind of people we wanted from just advertising alone on our um, on our council website and um, we did I think they helped us make videos with the heads of services for each role so it really gave candidates an insight to who they were coming to join who they would be working for and what their job would entail instead of just reading a job description and seeing um what um what not getting kind of a feel for the role um as well it kind of they really helped bridge the gap between candidate and employer um not only finding the right candidate for us but talking to the um candidate and seeing if we're right for them as a as a company because not every company suits everyone so that um that really helps as well which we don't when you're doing it in-house you don't get that chance to talk to every single candidate that kind of applies to your roles so um having them conversations really i think attracted the right kinds of candidates that we were looking for um as well they were market experts so um they could offer real honest truths about what we could do better and what we weren't doing that other maybe councils were and were attracting people that we want so how we could change things that we were doing change offer more things or um, advertise in different ways to kind of really entice people in and want to work for Basildon and sell Basildon as a really exciting opportunity with um, lots of opportunity for growth and things like that because it is an exciting place to work for when we were going through a huge a huge change which we want people to be excited about as well so Penna really helped kind of sell Basildon Council as an employer to candidates which was really useful. Um, before our uh, hard to fill posts as well um, they, they, they had an existing network of people that they could reach out to which again we didn't have um, in-house so for, for roles that we've been out for before and been unsuccessful they were able to offer candidates that we hadn't seen before and maybe wouldn't have thought of Basildon as a place to work in the in the first instance, but with them kind of giving, um, calling them up and contacting them firsthand, they were able to think, oh, okay, this might be a good opportunity and what, what, what's Basildon got to offer for me? So kind of selling the role where we were, we, we, sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, we can't do in-house as such. So that was really good. Um, and also, um, yeah, just kind of the frank feedback. We, we always ask the guys at Penna, I've spoken to many people at Penna, um, be honest, be honest. Why don't people want to work for Basildon? What, why, why, what can we change and what are we doing wrong? So kind of, um, yeah, so helping to kind of improve our services and because obviously this process isn't just short term, the relationship with Penna will be ongoing and it will be kind of what can we do in the future and what can we learn from this process that next time we go out for any roles we can try again and re revamp and kind of get a better understanding because obviously you're not going to be successful every time luckily i think we had two hard fill posts 
that we've been, one of which would, I think had been vacant for about two years, being filled on an agency basis, that Penna really brought forward. I think the recruit manager was very impressed with the, um, not only was there one candidate, but numerous candidates that he felt could fill the role. So that, like we hadn't seen before. Um, so really the insight that Penna gave um, really helped define um, what, what the market was like and what we could get from it. So yeah. A good experience with Penna. <laughs> and, and, and Lauren, some learning points, I think, for all of us around um, the connectivity in terms of sort of candidate management, your, your team being very available to talk to candidates and really do that sort of transitioning, particularly the private sector candidates into public sector. So, you know, yeah. it, it's good that it's work, but actually it takes a good client and you have to invest in that as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think the fact, the fact uh, you were so adaptable as well, I think we went out for these roles the week we went into lockdown. So um, everything was kind of very up in the air. And as you can imagine, people might not be thinking this is a great time to move job. So Penna really helped contact the people and reassure them that we're still starting people, even if you're working from home to begin with, that it would just be in a, a different process, a different experience, but still um, able to accommodate it. And I think as well, I think we did all of our um, all of our interviews virtually which was a new norm because we've never done so many virtual interviews before and so Penna really helped get that process um, seamlessly in place because um, it had to be done ASAP because there was no no alternative really. It's good to know it's worked isn't it but uh, thank you for that uh, really honest appraisal it's really really helpful and uh, thanks to John and Sonia for the overview of where this uh, approach is working and I think the, the, the key for me is um, what I'm seeing is that it's about that much more targeted approach and the opportunity to have high touch with candidates to have conversations even though we are probably going to be in a, a sort of more job seekers available than we've had for some time um, I doubt there'll be many social workers queuing up uh, unemployed so I think it is still important that employers think about the way in which they take their message um, fully out into the market through attraction sourcing and using programmatic so I think those return on investments and looking at cost and time to hire we're seeing real improvements so Julie I'll stop there I'm not sure there's any questions in the chat which is which is hopefully because we've answered them all um, but if anybody wants to find us any more information, do get in touch with John or Sonia, um, or if you want to sort of look at the Basildon and work, we've, we can send you the, the case study data there as well. So Julie, oh, back, back to you to, to, to close the session. Thank you, Julie. And, and thank you to, to, uh, to John and to Sonia and Lauren as well for um, lots of information in a very short space of time. Really interesting. And uh, one of my questions would have been about the feedback from candidates, but maybe that's one for another day. <laughs> so thank you very much to all of you for joining um, there are more lunch and learn sessions coming up with PPMA um, in during July and of course we've got our September virtual conference as well so thank you all very much I wish you um, a very good rest of the day and a lovely weekend thank you thanks Julie thanks Lauren have a good weekend everybody bye -bye. Thanks all. see you later bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.